we have the emotional intelligence level of a combined nine-year-old. Welcome to the show. Welcome. <laughs> From the treehouse in Phoenix, Arizona. Welcome to Not Conscious, everyone. From the one of the home offices in Gilbert. Yes. Your casa from si. in which you reside. Yes, Jess. But we are recording in the treehouse today. Today As is usual. November the something. 17th? I don't know. I have to yes, look. and it would be the I 17th, the 17th, sir. Because I know the Friday was the 13th. Friday was the 13th. Very well done, sir. You do the math. I do. I am good at math and stuff. I love the math. Yeah. It's my favorite. The, my maths is the favorite part yeah. of this show. Actually, your maths. All the math. All of it. Yeah. So um, today is the 17th of November, 2020. Uh, lockdown 2.0 is imminently approaching. I thought it already was because in the British. Europe started doing it, but I think the United States is following suit. Just got off the phone with my madre. Oh, America. We're going we're gonna to table that, but uh, they, they shut down Philly completely. Oh, no. Restaurants, everything The last closed. time we talked, Philly was burning. Yeah. This time it's shut down. It's shut down. Because yeah. it burnt. It's amazing. It, what a... God, I love that place, though. It's like home. It's always going to be home. But today we're going to talk about um, a serious subject, as we do on these knocked consciousnesses. Yes. Uh, which one is this one, sir? This is the Century of the Self, Part Three. Now, how do we do three? No, no, three. Three. We can well, do it the German that's way. That's the German way. It's funny. I use that with my mom. I go, "Show me three fingers. Three, show me three. And she did that. Yeah. Just like from Inglorious Bastards. Yeah. Man. It was awesome. I didn't know that. And then she'd ask all her friends. They all do it. They all do this. Very interesting. And that's how they had a big shootout in the bar. And a lot <laughs> of people they, died. It's many shootouts. And that one lady lost her shoe there. Yeah, and then lost her life later. Yeah, oh, that was rough. But Century of the Self. Yes, part, part three. Part deux. Part three. Part trois. Très. Oui, oui. Très. Yeah. Tres. Because we've done two. We've done two. And there's um, one more to go after this. The Engineering of Consent was uh, part two. Sure. This one, uh, can you, do you, do you know the title? Can you read the entire title? Because it's like a tongue twister so long. Oh, poop. There's a policeman in your brain or something like that? Yeah, there's a policeman in your head and you got to get him out or something. We got to destroy it. We must destroy him. I wrote it down too. Where is it? Uh-oh. There's a policeman in your head and you must destroy it. we must it. destroy it. Is that what it was? Yes, that was okay. it. Um, Which is weird. You're like, why am I watching this show? That's a strange title. It is weird because I've always found that it's kind of like podcast titles on the Different. episode titles. Or like show titles that are titled something and they have nothing. How, where did you get from? Where did you get that number? I can't believe you redid that. <laughs> You're. It's funny because I'm the. I'm not the Virgo and I'm the one freaking out right now. Whoa, bro! Oh, this shit, is the whole got pulled off moved before, Holy bro. Holy fuck! I'm sorry, dude. Whoa! I didn't this realize is, this. Okay, you know how physics works with the fulcrum well, and the shit, weight. Dude, and I didn't the realize end, the it was so out. unbalanced. It's unbalanced. Oh, it's just like us. Like my brain. Uh, fuck, dude. Sorry. Coming out of episode two, part two, if I may, kind si. of synopsize. Yeah. Um, we're coming out of the 50s, which mass production was happening. Bernays and Anna Freud were owning everything and being millionaires with focus groups. And um, what were the, was it focus groups? Is that what mm -hmm. they were called? Mm -hmm. And the Betty Crocker adding the egg and all that stuff. And they're they're owning it, right? Mass production's working. The people are just eating it up like, like it's candy. Post World War Two. Post World War Two. Very conservative. Yes. Just suburban suburbia. Yeah. One stamp, right? One one size fits all. Everything pretty much the same. You know, mass production, right? So every car is pretty much the same. Every every this that the other is the same. And they were just trying to market it to us by with celebrities and by using our brains against us. That is a very good summarization. Now we find ourselves coming out of this part and there's a new kind of rise to a new philosophy or psychology that is not about suppressing one's uh, one's desires, right? Individuality? Well, it's suppressing one's desires. It's now to express them. Yes, sir. Right? Self-expression. Self-expression is a big thing. Yes, sir. Um, Freud always talked about suppressing everything, holding it down. Yes, and where would you like to start with this, sir? Uh, I'd like to note that this this second episode, excuse me, the third episode, I kind of did a timeline in my in my brain in my notes that it's kind of 1960 to 1980, just exactly. so that I could see. Okay, well, what was happening during those times? You know, okay, it was it was the 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 rise of Vietnam. It was um, Kennedy was assassinated. The second Kennedy was assassinated. 
um, you know, the turbulent times of the protests and kind of to put myself in the shoes of those people during those times of the baby boomers growing up, getting drafted, and then as well as going into the 70s, the, the you know, the Watergate and inflation and um, Carter and the, the entire, those two decades were, a lot of things happened. And a, a lot of changes took place during those times, you know, from the hippie movement to disco happened. You know, a lot of things took place during those 20 years and people evolved. And I, I, I try to keep that in mind during watching the show and taking notes. Do you want to know how I prepared for the 60s to the 80s? Uh, you were born. I listened to Billy Joel song. Okay. He didn't start the fire, bro. <laughs> I'm like, Doris Day, and not Johnny Ray, and Nixon. Kennedy. Yeah. It was awesome. To- totally walked me through it. Of course. History lesson in uh-huh. four minutes. And it was. I mean, think. what's interesting is we look at the current times and how fast like technology goes, right? Yeah. And now it's all digital. But back then in the physical realm... I would say the 60s to the 80s were probably, well, I mean, we obviously produced a lot in the 40s because of the war and stuff. But I mean, like, it was just, we were just running on all cylinders at that point, it felt like, right? At least in this, yeah. going into the 60s, before Vietnam, we were kind of chugging along, right? I feel like Vietnam changed a lot. Oh, of cool. I would really, I mean, obviously I wasn't alive um, for most of it, and I don't remember it at all, so obviously, but I would agree with you. You know, reading history books and watching, you know, and li- listening to my uncle and my my parents and talk about how how they used to talk about those times. Yeah, I would agree with you completely from my perspective. The philosophy in my head is World War Two. We were fighting off an enemy. And in Vietnam, we were the attackers, the aggressors. We went into another country. So that was on us in a war that many people didn't agree with. Right. And to that to that point, it was us feeling like we were trying to put our footprint in other people aces in the world where in world war ii we're just defending protecting other people we were trying to help others yeah it seemed much more selfish and vietnam wasn't really even a war it was yeah it was conflict yeah it was it slowly ramped up over years it wasn't like a million dudes get on a ship let's go right it wasn't a single event or anything like that like we like we had staged so we're going into this so we're coming out of the 50s and we're going from suppressing all your emotions to the rise of another kind of self-expression, correct? Yes, sir. And that was with a protege of Freud's, I believe. Um, Reich? Al- I Alfred thought Reich? I or? had, I put Reich, Wilhelm Reich. Yes. I, my definition of him, I put him as an anti-Freud. Right, but he studied under freud initially he, i didn't get that oh, i think okay. that was in the beginning i okay. i'm i hope i don't misspeak my i mean that's entirely possible my understanding was he was and what happened was this he then he had philosophical differences with freud okay but he studied under him initially but felt that it was it was about letting out the letting out the the feelings yeah is what keeps you from having that deep dark or going into that deep dark place like what happened in world war one for example yes so freud was all about no you need to recognize that you're you're evil and you need to push it down all the time this guy said let it out in little pressure sensors things and you won't get to the point of boiling over or bubbling over right that's kind of what i got from it yeah and what was interesting was anna and edward forced him out of the local psychology stuff so what do you have in your notes sir uh yeah i had that anna freud and uh wilhelm reich at a convention in 1934 um they basically ganged up on reich and just like you said removed him from that but i had that that reich believed that unconscious forces were good and not evil like freud thought so literally he believed the opposite of freud and and his his and Anna Freud as well. Um, but the, the main point that I had was that uh, Wilhelm Reich, he was known for the phrase liberate the libido. So he believed that. Sex. Yeah, you should get laid. Well, Freud did too. Freud felt that the deepest desires was sex. Uh, I, and, and this is where, where I may have misunderstood it. It was my impression that they both felt similarly about humans, but s- suppressing it wasn't the answer. Expressing it was if that makes sense so like they would never get to freud's level of darkness if they let it out 
intermittently. Yeah, I got you. Through the libido, correct, through right. sex. Right. And Freud also thought sex was big. What was the biggest shock in the early part of that that you remember about the sex part? Do you remember a specific Yeah, thing that, that um, Anna Freud was celibate. Yeah, her entire, not had a single sexual experience, she yeah. said? Yeah, so... Uh, Wilhelm Reich's daughter was interviewed and she said that Anna Freud was celibate so and she was bearing the torch for Sigmund Freud's work but she had no sexual experience so I equated it to when I had sex ed in seventh grade from a nun and I, I um uh excuse me sister Mary elephant so are you, uh, you in the back you, <laughs> I mean, Chris, you have no, hi, I'm Chris Peralta. I'd like to show you shampoo. It doesn't work, man. What are we doing? <laughs> what the hell? Interesting. <laughs> I never really thought I, can I sell you some shampoo conditioner? No, I don't buy from a ball guy. I never thought about sex ed at a Catholic prep school. Ta-da. By virgins. And I, sex and ed I, taught and by I can virgins. hear Sam Kinison in my head when he makes fun of Dr. Ruth. Yes. Dr. Ruth? When was the last time you saw a penis, Dr. Ruth? Do you suck dick on horseback, Annie Oakley? Because it's true. She was 90, so she was advice. talking to men at the same time while she was loving to herself. Sure. She was doing a lot of the work. I'm, that's a pretty decent Dr. Ruth. Dr. Ruth? It has to be higher pitched. We'll Dr. Wor- Ruth? Not to, we'll work on that later. Yeah, just don't kick me in the butt. But balls, I, do I? I do give you. A B minus forever. Forever. Yes. So that was well played. Um, yeah. Anna Freud had no idea about sex, but how could she have a philosophy that believed that sex pushed everything when she <laughs> didn't have it? Like she didn't experience the. Uh, it's the, so stupid. It's the funniest thing. Um, so we go from uh, suppression to expression. But whoa, this guy, this guy was a little bit of a, he was a different cat, wasn't he? Yes. Okay. What? What? Did, he invented a, a machine. Did you put? Did you take that down? Uh, the Oregon machine. No. The Oregon ray gun. Did you remember the ray gun uh, that he created? Yeah, I kind of just glossed over that because okay. I didn't think that was. Well, go ahead. Well, it's important because it speaks to the mind of the person telling you what to do. Uh, he yeah. had a ray gun that sucked up sexual energy and could create cl- uh, rain clouds and could destroy UFOs in the future from an alien invasion. And then he got busted for saying it cured cancer, I think, is why he yes. had to, he got de deplatformed. I, I guess, I, I, guess I should have wrote that down. Cancel culture. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's was kind of the point about that. He had some ray gun. It's pretty awesome. This this documentary I've actually suggested to a couple people, even on the Twits, and they're like, Thank you so much for telling me about this. This is super fascinating. <coughs> and I said, listen to our podcast after. But still dot 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 listen dot dot dot. Yeah, I did it just for that. It was a whole setup. Here, listen to four hours so you can listen to you 23 listen to BBC hours. for four hours. Yeah, and then listen to us for eight. And then we've got 50 <laughs> episodes at two hours apiece. There's another hundred. Here you go. Here you go. This laid on a nice silver platter for you. Boom. Okay, so this guy gets de-whatevered. De-platforms. He gets uh, canceled. cancel culture. We get a little cancel culture going. And then he, what's the Esalen Institute? Is that what he started? Or was uh, that the other guy? Yeah, I have that. Coast. But I think that was him after he got da-da-da. back after he unplatformed himself. Yes, he kind of started over. He did it correct. Do-over. He reinvented himself. Uh, did I jump? Are we? Oh no, uh, yeah, you totally are, did. Oh well, then let's go. Let's rewind. But then. that's fine. I mean, no, yeah, no, we can I don't jump, jump to that. around. What's what? Jump around. The other uh, uh, note I had in nineteen fifties: consumer is king, because as you mentioned. Um, the 50s was the boom, and everybody had money because they were back to work from the war, et cetera, buying cars, buying little houses in the suburbs. Yeah, yeah. I don't think we need to go on any further no, on that. No, for sure. Um, the 1960s, I had advertising was manipulation. That's my that's my wording, not, not theirs. Well, it was. I mean, all the way from the 20s, even. Yeah, but it was because in, in the 60s, coming out of the 50s, people had more money, you know, and they they had more disposable income. So it wasn't the, the culture that had been developing for 30 to 40 years of a, a wants based society versus a needs based society, which we mentioned previously was bigger than ever. Yeah. And then con- obviously that has continued exponentially since then. So it can, that I just think that that's a valid, I mean, a, a point worth mentioning. 
Yeah, like people sacrificing now for the future too. And that comes up later. Yeah, we'll talk yeah, about yeah, that yeah. with the insurance stuff. But um, so out of the 50s, much more conservative, right? And now we've got this self-expression. Now people are starting to individualize. Is that where we're at? Um, I have the whole... Um The students accusing corporate America of brainwashing, mm -hmm. social control, the group uh, known as the Weatherman, yes. began bombing corporations uh, because obviously they believed the war in Vietnam was illegal. Uh, there was references to the 1968 Democratic National Conventions and the, all the protests and all the uprisings, these smaller groups believed that they could change the government. They believed that, that protests peacefully could they could create social change that way. And then they realized um, via the, the Democratic Convention in 68, as well as the Kent State shooting in 1970, that wasn't the case. When the, when the National Guard starts shooting people, you realize you're outgunned. And that's what the, the, the leaders of those groups talked about on the, on the documentary. Right. And that the, was the weathermen said they would use any sort of violence to get what they wanted. That they group said did. Peace yes. Wasn't. Yeah. They were, that was a, that was in a group of people, for sure. Right. And we there could probably is actually, do a podcast on that. There actually is a, a Netflix special about that that just came out in the last few months. Trial of the Seven. Or oh, yeah. That's the one. Chicago that's, Seven. Didn't they blow up? Yeah. I think I said yeah. Trial of the Seven. Chicago Seven. Something like and that. They, they were the ones who blew up that four block radio or four, that huge area, didn't they? Wasn't that? I don't know what they blew up. They blew up something. I think it was that or New York City. The dude had an amazing, amazing puffy... It was kind of afro 60s, 70 hair. Oh, so badass. With lamb chops. You just love hair, bro. Well, yeah, but he looks like cool, man. You like hair and metal. Uh, duh. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so I, 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 I thought it was interesting how they went in with the idea of changing the social landscape through protests, and then they met a brick wall when the government unleashed the guns on them and they like oh we're gonna lose yeah and they backtracked yeah which they kind of had to there's not much yeah they have much choice there yeah unfortunately well i mean g violence with violence doesn't that obviously doesn't solve anything and right? one of the guys said it was obvious they were outgunned or something to that effect you recall right. that comment yes yeah they definitely were outgunned well, and that's the thing right. you can only do so much uh before you're overrun and people start getting killed right. by the a lot not and just surviving by four Right. And you know, yeah. And you have to survive. Right. And you have yeah. to get away and you yeah. have to stay alive. So it makes total sense. Um, I found that interesting as well. The weathermen are, we probably could do, yeah, we probably should watch that. And probably. Do on that. Probably. Probably. All right. Okay. You talk me into it. I'll now, do that tonight. Now this is where we start going. We, people started feeling like to your point, oppressed or suppressed by the government, not the government per se, but by the big business, right? His business was holding them down. And they, this is how they freed themselves was to destroy the policeman in their head. Right. They said, there's a policeman in your head. The way to, to get through that is to not be part of that by internally not being part of it. Yes. Versus because they found they couldn't change the system. So they went to change themselves within the system. It's um, kind of how I, I put down the movement just to change oneself. Okay. Also known as a yippie. Oh, yes. Y-I-P-P-I-E. Mr. Rubin. Making a new you. Yeah. And that's, and that's, what that's really where they happened. turn back to, to Reich. Yes. And they go back there and um, they start doing the, is it when they start having those classes? They, that's where they put them on the hot seat. Yes. Where they, they talk to their inner demons, which I was fascinated by. I was blown away by the first guy. Who said I'm going to kill? I can yeah. kill all of you. I can yeah. destroy you. So why with don't my you mind? back up and, and tell our oh. fantastic listeners what what they what did Wilhelm Reich ask that guy to do? Why don't you do me a favor? Go grab that stick of fury and you tell me a story time. Okay. Can you reach it? Yeah, of course I can. Or you have to go all the way out of frame. Oh shit! It moved. Where it moved to? From? I, I thought it was over oh. here. Oh. Oh, yeah, a little moved. I mean, it'll move back. We bit. just, we haven't. Uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, story time with the Stick of Fury. Let's go, Friars. Oh, shit, wrong one. Sorry, sorry. Go, Marcus. Hi, boys and girls. It's story time with Christopher Peralta. No, it's your turn, sir. Oh, it's my turn? Yeah, it's your turn. You're going to tell okay, the story. Okay, so, sorry. I so, talk too much, man. 
uh, Wilhelm Reich was sitting, it, was, it looked like a group therapy session. So he asked one of the guys to put, take out his inner demon and put it on the table and talk to it. And what would he say to it? And then the guy had a conversation with the inner demon. Then he said, okay, now talk to me like you are your inner demon. And the dude, <laughs> it was deranged. He said, I will kill you. I will kill all of you. It was. I can destroy you. It was. Wow. Uh, holy shit. It was, t it was crazy. The things that I. I I probably should have quoted it better, but it was disturbing. It's worth watching. We're, Absolutely. We're teasing it so you watch it. Too. Sure. We're not just going to completely describe well, it. Well, it was cool uh, and terrifying. That no one else seemed scared in that room terrified yeah. me. I was like on the edge of my seat yeah, when he started me talking. Too. It was I'm like, weird. Is, is he going to come at me? Or, you know, if yeah, I were in that room. It was 3D, bro. Well, if he was in the room. Yeah. It was a uh, century of self 3D. In IMAX theater. It was Oculus, bro. In 4x3 uh, full screen. All that shit. That was horrible. That was weird. That was horrible that story, was story time. time. <laughs> <laughs> it's a doc conscious. They get that better. Was the beer Googles was a better story. That was story. wretched. <laughs> My favorite word, bro. I can destroy it. I can melt your mind. I can destroy you. I can kill you right now. Do you so know weird, how I can dude. destroy you? Creep me, you know what? That interview out. alone, which took 90 seconds, I think is worth watching that whole hour. Yeah. And for it was sure. in black and white. It was so creepy, man. Absolutely, for sure. And uh, so after the story time. Yes. After this guy, uh, is this. Yeah, what's next on that? Because I think I know what's up. Next is I have the human potential movement. And this is where you said the Esalen Institute. Okay. That's where, that's uh, there where were 200 in. centers across America, and this uh, mentioned they had, um, I don't know why I put racist meetings here. Yeah, that's what exactly what Is that next. what he called them? Yeah, they were, ra well, they racial. had racial meetings where basically they brought African American or black people together, uh, African American or black, and or people of color, and white people. Now, I think the one guy said the blacks and the whites. Now... Obviously, is an older guy from an older generation. Please, uh, not defending the words, but excuse the time. You know what I mean? That's like, what the guy said. Yeah, the guy said blacks and whites, okay? And he said the blacks would use it as an opportunity to gang up on the whites. And, and he goes, and they let us have it. Do you remember him saying that? I do. That? My, my, I believe what he said was it was a disaster. That was what my, my notes said. That is correct. It was an absolute disaster, they said. And then I, they also had meetings... At a, a large convent, which I like to call the nunnery, which is not a word, but I don't care. In Los Angeles, there were 600 nuns there, and they did, an ex they did a psychological experiment on these nuns on how they can be more self-expressive. So a bunch of nuns decided, hey, we're not going to wear our habits anymore. So they started going out and buying clothes, but they were still nuns. And over six months, half of the nuns left the convent. And then oh, six months later, the convent shut down. I'd like to go back to the Please. other one. Yeah, of course. Just because of the impact it had. Because, okay. But I do want to also talk about that. Very interesting. Because we, we're going to deep dive, try to try to deep dive in both. Sure. Do you remember the person of color uh, basically yelling at the, the guy, the smug looking guy with the glasses, the white guy chewing the gum? And he's like, it's yours too. He wasn't lying, but that's not how the guy felt. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the guy's just yelling, you're cops, you pigs, you got your cops, you got your buildings. And the other guy's like, they're yours too. You know, and he, I was, his composure was pretty good. And I think he was letting it happen, but then he started laughing almost at him. And I didn't, that made me uncomfortable. Yeah, that wasn't a smart thing to do. Yeah. It just, and second of all, you have to think that that was a very, very, very different time. Yes. You know, we're talking you know, 25, 30 years ago, if not more. So. Well, 1970 is 50 years oh, ago. Oh, is that when that was? I didn't well, know. Well, it was before. It was in that time. So say 80. Let's just go 80 because this is where it stops. It's at least 40 years. Okay. So, so it's at least plus. 40 years ago. Right. Between so 40 and 50 So you're years. talking about the, 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 the culture and the, the race relations 
was v- vastly different than it is today. Just and, 10 years removed from, say, segregate, like segregation Well, laws. yeah, 64 yeah. was voting 64 rights. 64 is a big one, right. So, it, Not, I mean, yeah. even if you think about, okay, we've come a long way, but we still have problems, right? Absolutely. So, you know, th- they, they made an attempt to have civil discourse and it it backfired it just to backfire. say the least yeah. right and i remember the other the two two or three african american gentlemen people of color talking to the one gentleman the reason you're here is different than the reason i'm here so like it almost was it was set up for failure only because the intent wasn't the same like no they weren't all in the same foundation if that makes sense like the reasoning for being there wasn't all to just get it out it was you know for a, an a, an agenda or for something you know, whether it's to backlash or to do something like that. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So then we get to your point. Then we get to this to the church, uh, to the school. Was it a school or a convent? It was a convent. Convent. I like get thee to a nunnery. <laughs> the human uh, potential movement. The, yeah. And so what happened with these women? They said they were allowed to to wear whatever they or well dress by their clothes. Right. They yeah. got rid of the habits yeah. and the right and the hats. I guess is a habit. Is the hat part of the habit? Is like a hood? Is it like uh, a hoodie? Is it, like, is it all connected? Uh, it's not connected. Okay. So I guess... Um, the what the hell is that called? Hat. I know this one. A hattery? D- d- well, it's... So I'll, I'll let habit. you chew on that while we're... I think habit... No, is habit the... Habit's the outfit. The outfit, right? Shit. I was one for Halloween, and I don't you even know the answer, man. You were just a nun's hat for Halloween? I was a nun, <laughs> bro. Sister Mary Elephant. What year was this? I don't know, 2005. Sister who? Sister Mary Elephant from Cheech and Chong. <laughs> class, <laughs> class, shut up. I got to go to the can, man. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> Give me that knife. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the first thing I did on my summer vacation, I got up. I went outside and looked for a job. Then I hung out by the convenience store. <laughs> Isn't that what, that was, yes. is that what that's from? Yes. That's the weirdest tangent ever, I think, well, it's, that we've done. So we stay pretty much on point. So we're back to the nunnery. The nun- <laughs> and these women started being more free and expressive with a lot of things. Yes. Started smoking? I, didn't, well? I don't believe I think, so. Did I, I may miss you that. You made that up. Maybe they were freedom torches from the 20s yeah. with Edward Bernays. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, but they started dressing and then they started like coercing each other and uh, what seducing I, each other. I recall one of the younger one of the younger nuns sisters was on a day trip with one of the older nuns and when they got back to the convent he plant, she planted one her, on her on her lips and uh, she liked it the old one of the older ones so yeah they had a little affair. Yeah, and we find out uh, they were Think about that. Think about what the nuns were. They were all Freud, right? Suppress, suppress, oh, suppress, yeah, suppress. Dude. And then they would get exposed to that freedom. And you hear that story, like Catholic Catholic school well, yeah, boys you and gotta girls think. coming out of- Everything Catholic was suppressed, dude. For right, like, and going into so college, long. how explosive college yeah. is for you, right? Yeah. Like, how much did you, like, I don't know if Massively, the right dude. word, but- I couldn't wait to leave and do oh, sure. everything the opposite. Sleep right. in, Just grow your hair, not, not get yelled at, not go to mass, drink everything in sight. I mean, do everything that I wasn't supposed to do. That's the whole point. I remember getting yelled at by my mom, or I don't know if yell that's the right term, but everything just seemed like an argument. So um, not answering my phone in college. You mean you were there and you let it ring? You don't, It's like a ringing phone is, cannot be left unanswered is such an old school like thought. What if, just yeah, I don't, I don't want to talk to anybody. Yeah, I'm good, Mom. Thanks. Take it off the hook, dude. I, I don't I'm know. just unplug that shit. Oh, it's for like, you know, for the whole house. Maybe yeah, for three, the, for three, the suite. People. Yeah, I'm not going to turn it off, you know. I'd probably be douchey to everybody else. I'd be like, oh, I don't know what happened. Oh, I don't know. I, I, oops. I don't know how that happened. Oops. Whoop, whoopsies. Well, now I just don't even have my, my I don't have my yeah, phone know, near me. I know. Rita. When I called you. <laughs> Oh shit, I That's forgot nice. you don't answer your phone. Hey man, I'm so sorry. Click, click, click. I forgot you don't answer your phone. Call me. <laughs> That's how it works. Look, I'm I'm able to disconnect because oh, I have to connect sometimes, so I have to turn it off. But um so we get to there and a woman seduces a younger woman and this older nun, correct? I don't so remember she's the just younger part. All, I think they said that's how it started with the younger one and then she seduced an older one, I think is what I hear her like heard today. But 
I may have misheard, you know, misremembered and stuff. Whatever it takes. But, um, and then half of them left and the whole thing shut down, right? Like Correct, the sir. The whole nunnery went away. Or the rectory. And the convent. The convent. Rectory. And the nunnery. Is it rectory, rectory or convent? Rectory is where the priests live. Oh. The convent is Wonder where the nuns Wonder why live. it's called the rectory. Hey, now. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, so <laughs> so coming out, so um, twice now this has failed miserably. Self-expression didn't seem to go so well for yeah, keeping, no well, shit, at huh? least for keeping the reins, to, for holding on to the reins. Keeping society together, it hasn't helped, has it? Right. Because it seemed like they were, things were a lot more, I wouldn't, I would, I would say harmonious, but I would maybe, because people were oppressed and repressed and repressed themselves and whatever, it just seemed to function, didn't seem as glaringly of a mistake to not function. And then when we started expressing it, then we saw how dysfunctional we are as a country, maybe. Just a thought. Hasn't that been true for a long time, though? Probably, but not being able to express it or something is probably what we've Or did people done. never think about it until that point? Yeah, I mean, it was a little that and probably, I mean, a lot of people were concerned, like, bite your tongue, right? Yeah, you, hear that all you just time. went to work and... Raise yeah. your two and a half kids and shut the hell up. Yeah, you just kind of tried to get through life because life is hard enough. And stupid. Yeah, and stupid life. Ugh, it's the worst, man. Oh, it's like, you know, this place would be great if it wasn't for life. Life is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened after the uh, the, the churchery? After the churcheries, <laughs> uh, I have love and a positive way of life. Uh, corporations, especially life insurance corporations noticed that policies were not being purchased and why was that sir uh due to the fact that people didn't give a shit if they were going to die no i just made that up uh due to the fact that they were experiencing different ways of life's life and expressing themselves differently yep and they were living in the now they weren't planning Correct. what and that's where it came that's where that phrase the sacrifice of the future came because in life insurance is all about you know putting stuff away for the future, yeah. right? In case I go, you're taking care of whatever. But oh, when you start yeah. getting into yourself, right? Start looking at your own desires and and get feeding into them, you find out that the future and someone else doesn't really matter ultimately. Yes. Right? So they needed to get Bernaysian and Freudian and get them somehow back to buying life insurance because it, it was... That industry specifically, right? Then they hire. Yeah. Uh, the way I insure, well, what, what I noticed was that there was one guy they, that they interviewed specifically about the life insurance. And they said that the people that were no longer buying policies were not following the Protestant way of life or the Protestant practice. Right. Of the Judeo Christian values. That right. We talk about. So he, he didn't say that they no longer went to church or they, he didn't say any of that, but they fell away from planning for the future in that respect. Free love, didn't have families. Which led me, exactly, that led me to believe, okay, are we, are we talking about the hippie movement? They never said that. Right. Because they called the yippies. Right. But then they, they, they have the hippies. And it really was a free love. Was yeah. It? Hippies were part of the free love movement. Yeah, but they never like. said the hippie. Right. They never used the word. But they, I mean, this was in the 1960s. Right. So uh, it would make perfect sense that hippies would not buy life insurance because they're buying weed and right. VW bugs. No shit. So, and I think hippies were part of it, but I think it was more of a national. Like hippies seem to be a West Coast San Francisco thing. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. And this seemed to be more glo like national. National, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think they were trying to be a little broader brush. That's like a good point. Hippies were part of that. Yeah, but okay. they weren't. The only reason they brought up the yippies is because they brought up the philosophy of the yippie. Okay. That I think pushed into that, and I think to your point, they were implying hippie as part of that for sure. Yeah. What did you think about all that? Like when the free love stuff? Because it basically was spitting in the face of the tradition, right? Yeah. I think it's great. There's a constant battle of, well, yeah. I, I love think it's it. Great. Like, hey, I don't want to buy life insurance. Oh, then don't. Good yeah. for you, dude. Well, that's the thing. You know? Is like, Good, can't we cool. just do whatever the fuck we want? Yeah. Without, as long as we don't hurt somebody else. Right. Like, but you also got to think if you have a wife and two kids, and you don't prepare, and something does happen to you, they're fucked. Especially back then, because general many yeah, times the 
the it was a single yes. income household. Yes, then your wife is going to be like, oh my god, I have to find a new husband to provide for me because right. it's 1963. Right. So unless you're obviously unless the, the the husband was in the military or you know something along those lines, but still, you I, still you're it's still a portion of of the income correct. that they could very true garner without. So uh, I, obviously, I'm a very responsible person for the most part. So except when it comes to Legos or Lego, my ego, bro. <laughs> can you can you quad quadruple that one? No, I don't even know what that means, bro. It's hashtag. Hashtag quadruple? Yeah. Oh. It's, it's the hashtag it's Lego that. my ego. Go what ahead. You, what are you doing? So Lego. So when you're playing in Lego and you yeah, have your life I, insurance. I, <laughs> are so you gonna give everything to your dogs? What I, are you doing? I don't you, dude. Oh, sweet. Yes. Let me give you all my information now, just yeah. like the King of Kenya last week. I got an email. Yeah. And they're like I can get you money. And I said, <laughs> okay. Will, will someone wash the royal penis? <laughs> <laughs> that's Zamunda, bro. I know. Not Kenya. It, oh, that's right. It was Zamunda. Totally different country. Darn it. Anyway. I am no longer the prince of Zamunda. I renounce my throne. Okay. Renounce. Uh, so you are a planner. Yes. So tell us more about your planning. I would, I would make sure that I had life insurance to cover the cost of my funeral, blah, 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 blah. It just seems. The right thing to do. It seems, it, and it's nine dollars, bro. It's like big fucking deal. It's it's nothing. So you know what I mean? Big, big deal. Who cares? Yeah. So I don't have life insurance. But you probably get it free through your job. Well, I get one year's worth. Right, which and, is enough to right. And cover. Megzi, and Megzi's the benefactor. Right, but it, the problem. I guess the issue is that at this point. And there's a Van Halen song about it. It costs more to get buried than it does to get born, which is horrible grammar. And I apologize. Is that? So the problem is, if if your funeral is seven or nine thousand dollars, and you die with zero, someone's going to get an eight thousand dollar bill. That's the issue. I'm with you. We are now going to call it Octothorpe. By the way, what's Octothorpe? It is the technical name for a hashtag. So the I pound like pound sign. sign. Pound, okay, fine. I'm going to go Octothorpe because I'm a fucking nerd can bro. i go lb sign yeah 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 drop the lbs <laughs> lbs i need to drop some lbs we, we all need to drop some lbs i, threw out my I lost candy, some bro. and then i turned around and found it where were they all right behind. oh there oh, it is hey mira there it was oh there it is. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah octothorpe but uh octothorpe lego my ego bro yeah i like it. lego my legos we still need to microbes we still need to microbes. yeah mary's working on it is she yes i gave her an assignment wow Cool. I like I like homework. Right? You really love yanking your wanky. Hey now. You you yanking your wanky. I'm gonna need food. Uh, the other thing I had yes. regarding this with the life insurance is that um, advertising had to figure out how to market themselves to this group and how would manufacturing adapt to this. That was my own point. They really didn't talk about that a lot, but I thought that was interesting because as a, you had a very good point, the fifties was mass production. It was the same cars. It was the same houses. It was the same. Everything was cookie cutter, right? Well, now you have this new generation, basically the baby boomers, right? That are coming of age and they're like, yeah, I don't want that shit, man. I, I don't, I, I'm good. I don't want that huge boat of a Chrysler. No. Not only do I want something different, I want my own thing. And I don't care if some of that, if someone else wants it or not. Like, mm -hmm. I want what I want. It's different. It's not just... You know, it's not like they just shrunk, like to your point, cars, right? It's not like you said, oh, that car is too big. Let's go smaller. No, they said, I want my car. I want my Correct. type of car. So it became very individualized. Yes. And and we get into that a little bit uh, down the road. What I wanted to, to talk about, though, too, was to your point, um, they're growing up and wanting to be individuals, right, versus the cookie cutter stuff. Yeah. What was your previous note? It. It'll re-trigger a thought. I Advertising to this new group? Yes. Yeah, so think about this. Back in the day, from my understanding, if I remember correctly, insurance was not like progressive didn't do home, auto, life, whatever. They had auto insurance, right? Like insurances were very, I think, specific. Right? So you could only get... It wasn't like you had all state life insurance. You had all state car insurance, and that's and all you, all state did was and car. I th right, and I th I feel like in the beginning that's how those companies started, right? And then they expanded on them. Progressive didn't have homeowners insurance until pretty recently, I think. You know what I mean? So okay. I think so. You're talking about an industry here that everybody's been feeding into this system, 
And now those people from World War II are starting to die, and they don't have any money coming in behind it. Oh. Imagine how scary that feeling is. Because the industry, like, think about if every, I have, I have Progressive, for example, right? Imagine if every Progressive customer got in a car accident all at the same time. Oh, yeah, that's really progressive bad. Progressive is out of business because they don't make money. They get more in than they ever pay out at the time. Because that's it's what a makes, business. Right. That's what, well, that's what makes it. You know what I'm saying is insurance is everyone pays into this bucket and they pay out strips and drabs. Of so course. It drips out as it's flooding in. Correct. But imagine if it flooded out. Correct. And I think that's where life insurance was like, oh, oh shit. Okay. Right. Yeah. So they, it makes total sense that they were the ones who kind of caught on to that. Imagine if they didn't, and it just kind of, you know what I mean? If they well, didn't get aggressive with that's, it. That's, I mean, that's happened time and time again. When you know, look at, look at, uh, shit. <laughs> Train of thought crashed. I I shut up too. I oh poop. Okay. Look at. Uh, Who's the company that? Again. Who's the company that was catalog based that didn't adapt to the damn internet? That pooped uh, yellow everywhere. pages. <laughs> Sky Mall. Yeah. Well, um, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Like Sears. Sears catalog. Okay, Sears. Fuck yeah, it. Sears catalog. I'm an idiot. No, it makes sense. I got you. God. You're talking about the Sears catalog versus the Pound, online Pound presence. <coughs> uh, Just think Sears. about how Sears didn't adapt. The same thing, like. These insurance companies did adapt, and they did go, oh, shit, right. if we don't adapt, we're screwed. Yeah, that's Sears, what I'm saying. Imagine that. Sears did not get on the bandwagon, and they are dead, right? And they've closed by, by – and I like Sears, you know? That's where I go buy jeans and whatever the fuck. So, obviously not anymore. <laughs> they used to be one of the companies. Sears and Roebuck, man. Well, I'm saying they're with one of the companies that the Dow Jones is based on, right? That oh, number yeah. that we see oh, yeah. is based on what thirty it's only like thirty five or fifty companies. Yeah. That number that we see, that you know, whatever. Yeah. The ten thousand, twenty thousand, twenty six, whatever number yeah, it's yeah, at. Yeah. That's only a portion of the actual stocks. It's only Correct. In certain companies. Sears used to be one of those. Correct. Think about how they were the Xerox of departments. You know what I mean? Like they're the Coke. Yeah. They were the Polaroid of instant. Yeah. They found they you know, started whatever. department right. stores, right? Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah, Woolworths did the same thing. They collapsed, but they didn't adapt. Was, right, and they, they had the perfect. Right. They were a catalog right. business, right? And, and they just they just went. Oh, the internet? No, thank you. Yeah, yeah. And then they're gone. Same thing. These insurance yeah. companies. Yeah, it's so interesting, and it's so cool that they discovered that though, because now that someone found like saw that going, oh shit, you know, it wasn't just income. They started paying out premiums. I'm sure from people starting to pass right after World war two yeah and going um we're not getting in as much as we're putting out but that's basic math too yeah yeah but it, it, you know but a lot of times the left hand doesn't know what the right hand well doing. yeah but if you see that trend yeah over six nine twelve eighteen months right and they probably reacted quicker than that i bet i mean they were probably on top of it i'm well, just saying you, kudos you would, to them to do you it. would have to be if you see your profits going down yeah that's going to show that's going to be a big red flag right absolutely so yep and that's you know it's interesting. Next. Next. They uh, they then. They then. I'm trying not to say the S-O word. Okay, how's that going? And it's really hard because oh, I, I keep it. seeing that I'm going uh, blah, blah, blah. It's like the interjection, right? I'm trying to get right to the point. And um, my was point was they started advertising. To, and how did they do that? What did they do? Do you, do you have not, anything down about that? I did not. Okay, but basically they kind of had to. They reacted by changing their tactic. Correct. Next. Next. Uh, next on the list, sir, is Warner Earnhardt. He started a movement known as EST, where individuals could learn how to be themselves. This was an intense movement that came out of the human potential movement. Yeah, so this is basically where the individual is really at its most powerful or highest peak kind of in a way. Yeah. Um, I had that, uh, the program removed constrictions and rules on society. Everyone has grown up with my notes were seems like some crazy, stupid bullshit. That's the one where they all laid on the ground and yelled, <laughs> right? Screamed and cried. No, like this is bitches. the one where they were all in a room 
and then they they held a guy against the wall. Oh, that's right. And push against two me. Two bigger guys, and they said, "Push back against push, us. Push, yes. push harder. Push, push harder. back against us." I was like, "Motherfucker, I paid you. Get out, get out, off of me and give me my money. I'm leaving now." You don't like conflict, though. Well, I'm like, dude, fuck off. You're, you're a lover. Uh, yeah, I'm like, I don't need you. Fuck to, you. I love people. I love asshole. you, bro. Where's my money, motherfucker? So the way <laughs> I looked at it is. And the the gentleman Werner Earnhardt that founded it when they interviewed him years after though this was very very popular, hundreds of thousands of people went to this, including some very famous people. John Denver was interviewed at, at back in the day, and he was leaving on a jet plane. Even leaving the John Denver experience. He was singing. He was singing. Leaving on a jet plane. Yeah, listen to it. It's, so the documentary is worth it just to hear John Denver sing. And the guy with the inner demon, John Denver's inner demon, the John Denver experience. So, didn't he crash an X plane, like an experimental? I believe it was a Y plane. It's a Y wing fighter. Yes, um, that's correct. Well, it was an experimental, correct? I don't know. Wasn't that him that crashed in a plane? He died in a plane crash off the coast. He, I think he was flying. It. That it was, was Kennedy. Kits. That's a different one, bro. <laughs> it's either John Denver or the other guy. I get mixed up. Uh, Rocky Colorado guy. It's the same guy. I think. Johnson Boise. I don't know, anyway. bro. The way I equated this program, um, when when the when the founder Werner Earnhardt broke it down, he said they stripped down a person's core, layer by layer, of what society has built up. And I equated that to the military. How you go? To, and I've said this before on other podcasts. When you go in basic training, they break you down so they can build you back up as a marine or as a soldier or you know navy except air force etc airmen so i equated it to that in a way where they they break down everything you know so that you can build yourself back up i agree uh i thought it was a little slightly different whereas where the military gives you back like discipline and puts instills discipline type stuff true this was more freeing Yes. Right. This so it was like you, the, you it was the antithesis yourself. of that, right? Yeah. It was actually deconstructing, not to put something on top of it, just to literally strip it away. Correct. But so the military that, does strip it away. Right. But then they put, they replace yes. it with so it's structure. Half the same. Right. The this, first half. Right. The strip away part is, worked fine. But once again, didn't we talk about systems that don't have something to replace it? Look what happens. It's right? some crazy, stupid bullshit. You get some crazy, stupid bullshit. You get some guy telling you to push against <laughs> but him. But hundred, hundreds of right. thousands of people went to this. We're fucking human, bro. We're all human. We get sucked into a trend. It's a fad. How, who talks about keto? I know a hundred thousands of people that go, keto, bro. Yeah, well, it Hockathor's works. keto. Sure. And so did South Beach. And so did uh, Atkins. Okay, and wait. So did okay, okay. The, the, the correct answer. Oh. This is it. Are you ready? People equal shit. Well, that's true oh, too. Sorry, but no, sorry. You, that is also somewhere. correct. No, I mean, Bob, that's tell him what he's won. Ding, 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 ding. So the keto works, comma, but tortillas. True. That's it. That's the right. that's the entire argument. I I believe the shirt has got carbs. Yeah, that's all. and rice, motherfucker. Oh, oh, that's that's carbs, bro. I know. Octopus. That's why I don't do keto is because I love tortillas and they love me. You know, I would totally be pescatarian if it wasn't for all the red meat pork and fucking you see dead people and yes a joe piscopo italian you're not an ambi turner oh man <laughs> <laughs> what was what was that from the mars episode that was from zoolander yeah but what didn't we call each other ambi something ambi bros ambi something i think trista <laughs> says on the one time anyway we get out of, okay, now these guys are telling you to push against each other, and they're basically stripping away all the societal Bullshit. conformity, right? Yeah. But they're not replacing it with any kind of other structure. They're just taking away all the restrictions. They're letting you do it yourself. And now you're a human that has zero constraints. How's have that a, work have out a for great you, day. ladies and gentlemen? Thank you, you know so what? much. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't mind that if, if, if there wasn't a dude yelling at me, I would be okay with it. Do you know why? Because you actually have self-discipline. Ima imagine not and having that taken away. Remember, the stripping is would be all of the, your pre-programmed respect, courtesy, holding a door. You know what I mean? Like, think about that. Or would that be removed too? Yeah, because it's society. Society told you to do that. Right. And would my discipline be removed also? 
I would think society instilled that in you. Why would yeah. you want to, you know, I, I would guess that they just went the full nine, right? The whole nine yards. Hey now. Hey now. That's one of your phrases, isn't it? The whole, the whole nine bro. yards of the gun. The ammunition, I think. Yes. The ammunition, nothing. Anyway, um, so that's my thought on that. What, any, any other thought on uh, the push against me, bro? Bro? <laughs> I, I, it's it's I think it's fucking dumb. I also well I also damn but it. I I like the idea of removing negative things from your life and building yourself back in a positive way. I think the idea is great. May I ask two questions? You can ask as many as you like, sir. Don't you think that you and I are already similar to those people without? Yes. Needing like yes. to spend money on something. We cash money? You you and I do live in society. We are in this world, but we are what? not of this world. What? We are clearly not of this world. And what I mean by I'm a that pescatarian? is No, we are, Joe Piscopo has nothing to do with this, <laughs> sir. Um nor Joe Pesci. A Pesci I'm a Pesci Okay, nice. okay, okay, okay. Okay, 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 okay. Um my point about that is uh you and I have do see those manipulations in society do we not we we address them on this show what are we talking about right now right this whole thing's about manipulation right well you and i though already we do go into the world seat with our eyes wide open looking for that so we have a higher propensity of finding it when we look for it why are you giving me a finger bro <laughs> i want to see if you're paying attention I can, i'm paying the fuck attention <laughs> uh ladies and gentlemen on the podcast world Christopher was scratching in the bridge of his nose with his oh, middle finger fuck. and thinking I wouldn't notice somehow. Oh, I cracked myself up. Um, I, that oh, makes one of you. Shit. That makes one of us, sir. Hey, I'm only here for my own entertainment, fucker. That's, hey, that's why I have you here, sir. Salud. Cheers to that. Oh, shit. But, <laughs> but what we were talking about was um, you and I already are trying to be anti-conformist in, in that respect. Uh huh. Are are we not? Yes. Excellent. Um, so we already know what, or we're looking for those pitfalls. It's it takes work though to do it. But I think like the people that force it that don't have that innate feel, I bet that probably backfired a lot. Because for you and I, we understood what we were getting into. I think we already looked at the ramifications down the road of what stripping away society for us would do for us and we knew we needed to still have certain levels of decorum yeah courtesy, where yeah discipline self you know self-awareness i guess right I, I wouldn't i mean there's a lot of there's things about myself that i don't like that i would like to remove i like to be better at i mean but that's true with everyone so i'm no different than anyone else in that respect obviously so yes, absolutely but we also know that we living within society is a <laughs> A pain Seems in the ass. Be, well, yeah, but it's like a necessary evil, right? <sighs> we love we. Don't get me wrong. I'd love to live in the backwoods and hunt for my own food and stuff, but At that's not very practical. I would be. I'd be dead like the call of the wild guy. He, I wouldn't even make it a week. He I made it think. for a while. He made it for months. I don't think I'd make it that long. I just. I'd love to want. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'd love to try that, but. Knowing I could crawl back would be great. Like if I just had to just up and burn all my shit and walk, I I don't think I'd walk that the earth like kung fu, like a grasshopper. Hey, we're done. Oh, okay, we're. Uh, do we have a next one or what else? What next. else do you have on that? Well, where were we at? This. Where? Where? What are oh, we doing? Stripping away society, right? Uh, John Denver, crazy, John stupid Denver. bullshit. <laughs> uh, we are now up to 1980 self actualization. Which I don't even know how to spell that shit. A C T U A L I Z A T I O. -N. I was totally wrong. Self actualization. I forgot the T. <laughs> Can I get it? Can I get that in a sentence? You are not self actualizationing. Self actualization. <laughs> I I hope I spelled that right. I... So, is that basically what the guy was doing at those at those? Intense sessions becoming self actualized. I think they were trying to be right. I mean, I and that's the point is like, remember, take away society, society has certain civilities to it as well. 
taking away all the civilities, you are now a base human. That's a fucking animal. Yes. That's an animal. There's no way without a caveman, without another control system in place for you, whether it's done by yourself or some other thing, you're a fucking animal at that point, I think. And that's that's dangerous to go back to our instincts. I, in my opinion, I mean, I don't get me wrong. I love people who express themselves freely. You know, you and I both are freedom of expression people. That's not what we're saying. But I think but that I th- you and oh, good. But that's not what self actualization means, is it? What do you think that means? I I don't really know what that term means. Is there a definition that they gave? Or Fuck no, dude. I'm just. What do you, What does it mean for you? Oh my god. What, dude? What actually? <laughs> What I wrote down was Amway <laughs> because my parents yeah. did Amway for like 20 years and like, oh, we want to be Diamond Club and all this shit. And they went to all the meetings every Tuesday and my dad had all these tapes and it was the dumbest shit in the world. And they made like $9 and they had the vitamins and the dish soap and the laundry soap and the, and they really thought they were going to sign people up and make money they really believed they were going to make money and they that's to me my dad listened to the tapes for like positive reinforcement and it's going to be a great day and no one's going to ruin your day and all those types of things almost mantra like yeah yeah tony like pre tony robbins type shit right so and this was like in the 70s and 80s and i remember going and i was I remember going in like in 1979 specifically because it was it was during the Iran Iran hostage situation. I remember that was on the news that day, and wow. I had to go to an Amway meeting and sit in someone's basement and watch fucking VHS tapes for like it was hours and hours. And I'm still traumatized by that. And I thank you for listening. That that's amazing that it's on that day. It, right. was, it was it was like a. It was during the time. It wasn't, right. you know, that oh, okay. day, right? Well, it's funny. I remember exactly where I was when OJ started driving down the highway. Or, Me too. Or whatever. I was at, uh, go, I'm sorry, where were you? No, no, please. I was at uh, <laughs> Girly Street Phoenix, Grill. Right? I was at Girly Street Grill in at Prescott. the bar in Prescott. I was, obviously, I had already the, graduated, yeah, what I, the but I was were you, in what Prescott the fuck for like a couple there? of days. Oh, okay. Very interesting. I went to Tower Records in Philadelphia. I was looking at laser discs. And up on the screen popped up OJ dri- or whatever his name, Ernie drive Ernie Shivers or whatever driving. I don't was know. It, who's who, who's it friend? The guy. Yeah. Your friend. The other Earl, guy. Earl or Ernie? I, I don't know. Bro, you're from California. You should at least know. Yeah, and he neighbor. went to SC too. I don't know his name, bro. Hello, to the world. We know what's even funnier. When is I was that... driving down the street, Mark was at the Tower Records. I guess. I think the girl I was with at the time. Woman, please. Woman. Young lady. Yes, young woman. Yes, Thank she you. was not a girl. Sorry. We were, in our, we were in our 20s. Calm down. Um, she was crying. I talked to her on the phone. What? And she was crying because OJ was going to get arrested. I'm like, bitch, you don't know him. You've never met him. Get your shit together. Why are you crying? You, what do you, you don't even know what a Buffalo Bill is, you idiot. She probably never used a Trojan either. <laughs> Come on, bro. That, that one deserves <laughs> She like raw dog in it. Oh, mute the microphones. <laughs> okay, microphones are muted for two seconds. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Really? I, I like that. <laughs> I love the mute. I hope people can't read lips oh, from the shit. side. Well, I don't think you, I think you were looking at me, so I'm good. I think okay, we're good. Let's move along. Whew. All right. You want the definition? Uh, please. To self-actualization in Maslow's hierarchy of needs is the highest level of psychological development where the actualization, quote unquote, is full of personal potential is achieved, which occurs usually after basic bodily and ego needs have been fulfilled. Okay. Yeah, the Maslow's hierarchy. And they've talked about Maslow's Yeah, before, which is about, on there too. You know, food, shelter, clothing, right? Yeah. And then you build up from there. Um, question, did you get in a lifestyle thing or did you skip that? That's next. Is that late? Oh, that's next. Okay, because I because when we got to 80, I'm like, well, I, nope. you know, we're it's, trying to go chronological. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's no, I'm with you. Okay, cool. I'm good. I just know we're going to touch up on it. So let's let's finish up the, these thoughts. But 
I just want to make sure that we we're going to hit that too. Uh, let me see. One more sentence here. So self-actualization. Okay. Uh, self-actualization was coined for the motive to realize one's full potential. The tendency to actualize itself as fully as possible is the basic drive, the drive of self-actualization. Okay. Yeah, it's like using the word in the definition. I love it. So it's the top end of that thing. All your basic needs are met, all your emotional needs are met, and then you ping. It's like uh, you go right to heaven, I guess. Sure. Is that right? So do you think Amway is self-actualization? It's a pyramid. <laughs> it's a pyramid Just like a Maslow's sure. hier hierarchy is. Well, I mean, it's pyramid shaped. What do they call it? Multi-level marketing? Uh, Multi-level marketing. Yeah, the uh, CBD oil company with which I worked was multi-level. Okay. Yeah, that's how it was the best way to do it direct. Had to be direct because at the time, four or five, you know, four or five years ago, about three to four years ago, CBD oil was very taboo at the time. It's just started really taking off, you know, last year or so. Right. But it was very taboo. So you had, it's not like you could advertise it, if that makes sense. Yeah. The, you know, the Googs and whatever wouldn't the advertise. Go the beer Googles? Stuff like that. Yes, sir. They don't like the advertising of the CBD oils. All right. We're coming out of self-actualization. Yes. And we go into what? Right. Um, Abraham, Abraham Maslow and the hierarchy of needs, as I previously mentioned. Uh, at the University of Stanford, they were hired to tell manufacturers the segments of consumers. They released a very specific survey to many to consumers and 86 percent of the consumers responded to the surveys on one shot yeah they sent Which it out astronomical once. i can't believe 86 percent responded that's shocking right it's so shocking have you ever heard the little thing that rogan says no on his show he goes have you answered a poll? The only people who answer polls are people who answer poll. Like, think about the people who actually answer fucking polls. When you ask them, like, who'd you vote for? What do you think about this or that? The people who are going to step aside and actually waste the rest of their day to tell you about what they think is like a not, it's like a subhuman level. You know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't exactly trust their opinion. Understood. Um, but so, this was also in 1980. No, but I'm saying to get 80, I'm saying to get 86%, I mean, you were lucky to get 10% response. Yeah, of course. I mean, 50, I mean, getting a plurality, getting 50, more than 50% of people responding would have been, I mean, a grand slam. I don't even know what 86% response rate is. A lot. A shit ton. I yeah. mean, it must tell you how either how compelling the questions were or how interested people were in sharing what they felt. Right? Or yes. a little combination of both? Yes. I wonder if we could get that survey. I wonder if that survey is available. Like oh, of what course What the questionnaire is. looks like. Um, the one lady that helped write the survey did say that the questions were very, she didn't use the word, the way I interpreted what she says, they they evoked an emotional response. So they were they were very probing and how does this make you feel? How does that, that sort of thing. So it had, a survey like that had never been written before. And she said several people wrote them back and said, hey, do you have another survey I could take? Right. Are you it fucking so serious? Good. Yeah. That's, cr that's crazy. People that, don't do that. People just do not. That is not done ever. That's I like mean, lonely hoarder shit, dude. That, people just do not do that ever. Not, not to my experience, not to my knowledge. And regardless of the time. You know what I mean? How many people share 86% and they go, hey, give me more of that. Yeah, it's weird, dude. It was odd. I, I just found it compelling. It must, you think we can get a copy of it? I would think so. We're going to have to, we're going to Google Yeah, we should beer, beer Google, Google that shit. Google. University of Stanford, no problem, dude. All right, thanks. Hey, University of Stanford, please come out and send us a copy. Could you get it on the mimeograph? I would love to. Uh, maybe they can throw it out in the trash. You and I can go in like uh, uh, Bluto and yeah. D-Day and get out the psych test. Yes, the carbon copy. Yep, the carbon copy. Maybe we can get a Scantron machine. with our number two pencils. Oh, Scantrons. <laughs> love it. <laughs> uh, the point of the, of the survey is, can they define people by the decisions they make? Not by the demographic of height, weight, color, age, race, blah, 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 blah money they make, etc. Can they define consumer demographics by the decisions, decisions that they make? And they 
created new demographics called values and lifestyles. And they said the personalities transcended race and class and money and whatever. Yes. They, they were they were drivers of the individual. And there were what, like five of them or so, a handful, three, three, four, something like there that? There was five, I five? think. Yeah. And then an another survey, there was 12. Okay. And it was so interesting with that. Like, yeah. Basically, by answering questions, they can tell you what motivates you, with you know, and and how to how to manipulate you or what. And once again, they're putting you into a group. They're labeling you in some way. You I know? find that kind of disturbing. It's disturbing, but it's how masses are have to be treated. Once again, well, oh, okay. yes, no, I agree with you. But the fact that I can answer fifty questions and then they can tell me, oh. Here's how we're going to market to you. Yeah, this is how we're going to manipulate you. I find you. that disturbing. Yeah. Like, you, you're you going to know me that well? You know what they find from us, though? I think we are one of those segments that are like the unpleasables. Oh, there's a segment of unpleasables? I'm, I'm sure there's one that fight just fights everything oh, regardless. Oh, we're the so fuck like, off segment. Yeah, like pretty much. I, I, that's, I would guess that's what I am. Because <laughs> I will be honest, I have only bought one or two things from a commercial I've seen. Like what? One of them. I'm. Oh, this is it. Oh. Get the stick oh, of fury, sir. Oh, the stick is coming. This is a good one. Oh, this is a good one. This is such a tangent. I love it. Okay. Oh, one time, sir. Sir, just hit it once. Stop. I like hitting it many times. Ha ha ha. Yeah, you do. Why don't you uh, mute yeah, me, bro? You mute me. All right. Um, this is what happened, ladies and gentlemen. I saw a commercial for. Bacon, and the company was Wright Brand Bacon, W-R-I-G-H-T. Maybe if I read some copy, maybe they'll pay us. But this is going to be a free one. This is a freebie, guys. The next one's going to cost you. Wright Brand Bacon, they called themselves Meat Candy. You already told the story. I did? Yeah. Fuck. Never mind. Story time's over. <laughs> I bought it, and it's never. I've never been the same. I bought it too, bro. Isn't it like, you. The, is it, is it seriously like the best bacon you've had? Uh, it was pretty close. It's pretty fucking good. It's pretty con consistently good. You know, we were going to, me and Steve came, Steve came over to watch the masters. We were going to wrap our hot dogs in it and put it on the grill. But then we, <laughs> as Marcus oh. slides down into his chair. Oh, that sounds so good. Yeah. Cause we had wieners on our mind, dude. <laughs> I got a wiener. I got wieners I got a wiener. on my mind. I got a hanker for a wiener. I got a wiener. <laughs> <laughs> That's an old one. People have to. There's some context here. There's some. Context. I've told that story before. I know you have. That's what I'm saying. There's context. That's I got why. wieners on my mind. Yeah, wieners on our mind. Because we like don't hot know, dogs. People don't know the the wiener thing from the. Everyone golf likes thing. hot dogs, bro. Everyone likes hot dogs. Lips and assholes, ladies and gentlemen. Delicious. Delish. Yeah, you and I are not generally influenced by, like, commercials and whatnot. As a matter of fact, I'd be like, why are they trying to make this a commercial? What else have you bought because of a commercial besides right bacon? I can't imagine. I don't think too many other things. I'm sure there has been something, but I don't, I'm not easily influenced. I think you and I both know that. Have you ever seen a commercial and said, I will not buy that shit ever? Yes. Are we allowed to talk about one of them? Billy Mays here. <laughs> Anything sold by Billy Mays? OxyClean. No, Oxy? I have ox I have OxyClean powder. I put in my laundry. Yeah, I've heard good. I've heard. I got that as a recommendation from someone else, not from the commercial. Open. Oh, maybe. I maybe I gave it a shot because it had a little extra cred. But I put that in every laundry. One scoop, everybody. Shamwow. I won't buy from that Vincent Shlomi guy who punched the hooker in the face. Yeah, but. Can we really? These are infomercials, bro. Okay, okay. I mean, they're really about, long commercials. Let's talk about valid thirty-second commercials. I wouldn't buy Discovery. <laughs> what's, what's that? <laughs> it's uh, you know, you know, assigned female birth, bro. Oh Jesus, dude, that's a bad joke. Um, how about you? How about, would you like to share something you just went fuck no? Uh, the McRib. Never. I've never even tried one. I've tr I've uh, had I, one. I, I, I don't eat them when they come out like. No, I don't have set my clock to it. Uh, pumpkin spice anything? Okay. That's smart, especially in the fall. It's topical. Look at you being topical. <laughs> it's like current events today. Well, the, the <laughs> issue is that they start selling them in Arizona right. in August, and it's 109 goddamn degrees. It is. And it's hot. And it's also hot. 
and spicy. The drink's hot and it's hot outside. Yeah. I don't need that shit. We don't need more heat. We're so, fucked. Global, the climate change, we're fucked, man. It's going to be 130 <laughs> degrees shit. fucking Tuesday. Um, <laughs> <laughs> November 23rd is 170 degrees. <laughs> oh, we just broke a record. 136 degrees in November. Now they label us again. They put us into these things and these core drivers. I'm trying to get back on topic. I don't know. Stay on target. Why? I don't know. We're having fun with this last thing. Uh, the commercials. Um, yeah. You know what it was? Chevy cars. <laughs> I've not been impressed by any Chevy commercial. I actually am disgusted by them. Is that weird? No. I feel like the Chevy mafia is going to come after me now. Do they have a mafia? It's funny because I have a Chevrolet engine in my Oldsmobile, which is a GM. Well, there you go. So it's not like I'm anti-Chevy per se, but I mean, it's also a 1964. So, you know, that's how that works. Yeah. Do you, could you uh, label or could you give me the list of the personality types or the- I don't have what that. What are they called? Lifestyles? The styles? I don't have that. Okay, not the- It was like an active one. Yeah, there was an- The chick swimming. Experientials. And then there's a guy playing a guitar. He's got a, like a leather jacket on. He's kind of like a punk yeah. rocker guy. Yep. Yep. Yeah. He doesn't want to- He's like the one guy that doesn't want to be pigeonholed. The independent, right. It's kind of, yeah. it's kind of like us, but there's so much- Like, we're a hybrid of that because we recognize that in us. But I'm a little bit of in. all of those because- that one girl is like, she likes to kayak and she likes to swim. And right. like, I like that. I love to hike and I, you know, yeah. and then I'm like the rocker guy, except without the beautiful hair that he had. So I, I fit into all those categories. I put you more into an exper experiential person sure. because you would do like the active things. So the hiking and all that. And those that remember they were saying like, they might have simple purchases, but they're not cheap. Right. Cause like kayaks cost money. Backpacking equipment costs money. It's very niche. It's not like they have a lot. But to do the things they want to do yeah. well costs yeah. cost money. I did see in episode four, they added a sixth category, Lego. So I'm definitely in that category. Yeah. You yeah. Lego. Oh, ruh, ruh. <laughs> Thank you for pluralizing Lego is Lego. Lego. Lego, my Lego, my ego, bro. Yeah. Yeah. And these, these categories were very interesting. And they're pretty specific. Remember when I told you about the blue shirt with the tag? You know, with the diversity, the diverse people, and they labeled, oh, they labeled all customers in five different store. strategies. Yes. Yes. We're, we're used sale. To work there. We're sale. Yes. Is what it was. That's correct. Um, they're like, hey, every, everybody's so unique and individual, but here's the five types. Well, this is at a place <laughs> where you used to work. Yeah. And they, they were very, they embraced diversity, but they put all consumers into five categories. Into five categories. So you thought that was very Alanis Morissette of them. I did. I felt like Alanis should have just appeared from the heavens and just Like gone, in Dogma. Boom, boop. <laughs> no touching. Sorry, she no touching. She should have booped somebody. I boop. I booped Christopher. <laughs> just so you guys know, on the, on the non-video version, I just booped On the nose. On the nose. On the nose. Not in the nose. On no. it. On the tip. Just the tip. Just the tip, sir. Whoa. Next. What do we got? Uh, next. What are the next uh, categories? Uh, or the next styles, right? They call them lifestyles. And, values and oh, lifestyles. That's right. Vowels. The new demographic. They call them vowels, right? Or sure. Like I don't that. know. Was a short, short I don't, term? I, sure. Uh, okay. Perhaps. I values don't know. I missed that part. Is. Okay. We're good. What happened next? 1980. Dun, dun, dun. The we're, we're coming to an end. Presidential election. The mm. new individualist was the term used uh, where President Reagan, when he was the candidate running, he wanted to remove government from people's lives. And Thatcher also ran with a similar platform in the UK, and they thought that there's no way that the people in the middle and people on... Um, the left, center right yeah would would they would they they're not going to vote for a conservative republican with this kind of message they'd be chaos they said yeah. moderate republican they specifically spoke about moderate republicans saying that's like suicide yeah because and they say they stated there's no clear demographic and you saw reagan say the same speech like multiple times yes get off government get off our backs i tear down this wall I can finally do my Ronald Reagan impression. You can do the wall part. Well, Nancy and I, 
Excuse you need this. the government to get off our backs and get back to work the way America knows how. Well, that's a ter- pretty decent it's rate. It's not terrible. I'll give you a B minus. All right. I'd like to see Frank Kelly in to do better, Reagan. I, I don't want to see that at all. <laughs> I did see him live, though. He's funny. Yeah. He's entertaining. His John Madden is phenomenal. It's the best. Uh, the best. You got to go guy here. I came and do it. That was what the fuck was that? A seal? Yeah, because that's what John Madden sounds like to me. Oh, he's <laughs> that was a seal, ladies and gentlemen. I should, I should record that. Arms. Yeah, I, we should do our own. Like, we should do story time. We should go. You and I just go, and then that's actually our story time harp. Oh. We'll, we'll vocalize all these. We'll make these acapella. Oh, ooga, ooga. Uh, yeah, ooga, ooga. What do you think? I'm. You talked me into you, it. Oh, we should try. Just, okay. That'd be fun. We'd have our own uh, sound people. People would steal it. Then we'd be like, copyright, bitches. Slap with a lawsuit. What's next? <laughs> so Reagan told, what, what was, did you write down the phrase? I didn't write it down, but the Me. one they said about getting back to work or getting government off our backs, right? What I wrote down was government removal from people's lives. But yes, twice he said in two different speeches, get government off people's back and put you back to work doing what you do best. Yes, that's what it was. Thank uh, you. Thank you for helping. And me. people just ate that erupted, shit. Oh. Erupted in applause. Yep. They love that crap because the idea of removing government from people's lives is was unheard of and amazing. Like, yeah, get out of my face. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but remember the the country was actually founded on those principles that he b- tried to bring back or that he brought back because it was about non-interference back in the day. Yes. The governments are growing correct. and growing correct. and growing military correct. this way, that way, socially, yes. whatever, you know, you know, the government got bigger and bigger and bigger and it kept getting in the way. Right. And he's like, we're under the biggest inflation of all time. And, Government is the problem. Yes, lo- government I mean, is not the solution. His inauguration that. speech. Government is not the solution. Government is the problem. And previously, government had always come to the rescue with economic incentive packages and stuff. Or to interfered help, with, right? Yeah, like, in a way. To, to try to help with the inflation right. issue. Because if you think about Carter, they, they interfered. They didn't help. They right. tried to help. Right. But they failed miserably. Or whatever the cycle that it was, probably economic, right? Because you got contrative cycle issues, right, with economically that every 60 years it kind of does its thing yeah uh, they might be accelerated now with the the way the world's digital and just faster but they go through higher faster highs and lows now it's yeah very interesting and what it was was what it was the individual term do you remember that what new they call, individualist yeah the new individualist they said they were the ones who swung the election or yeah for both right? thatcher and for Reagan. yeah because it was it was and it and it was across Remember race, color, creed, yeah. uh, economic status, anything. It was a type of personality Correct. that bought that that could buy into that. And once or, again, it was there was no clear demographic. Right. Which that's I think that's amazing that, you know, I mean from an objective perspective, that's really objective perspective. Well, because my parents were so liberal and they voted, they didn't care. They're like, my vote they voted for goddamn Mondale for Christ's sake. And Dukakis with the eyebrows, and you know what I mean. So they they were. I'm losing to this guy. Yeah, they they. My parents were blinded by blue, right? Right. And they never thought, hey, let's listen to what the other side has to say. Where I try to listen to everything from both sides. Right. So to to watch this documentary and see how his campaign did this and Thatcher's campaign as well. Yeah. It it's it's very interesting how they marketed themselves. That's my word. To, they did. They, they, they marketed to a personality type, mm-hmm. not to a dem. It's a. It was a new demographic, and that's crazy. And I was very impressed by that. I also think that, um, in addition to that, I. I mean, this is the issue with some documentaries, and that it's like agenda driven. But basically, yeah. they're telling us that Freud is evil, right? Like, or how how they manip- they're manipulating us. Well, that's the final conclusion. So they're already. It's going to be a little more negative, right? Like towards the manipulation you, side. Would, yeah, I see what you're saying. Right. In this case, I'm just saying. Um, I didn't take it that way, but go ahead. Right. I was just speaking about in this case. 
remember there were other factors the inflation under carter was shit like government was in the way like just going with a different going in a different direction zagging when they think we're supposed to zig right maybe is also what was so attractive it wasn't just that personality type of course you know what i mean it yes. may have been other factors to that so like as important as this was which it totally was maybe it was just the the timing right the feel right the timing the feel right just like we just had a recent election that timing to change was there yeah right just how it works so it's it is really interesting but they did feed on the or they they profited off of these people's votes i mean i don't know another well, way to yeah. say it is it profit like it's weird right like almost like a business they treated well, didn't the like a business. make money off the elect off of the presidency of course and the thing is we we are humans right but we're just human currency right what's human capital do you remember f oh fucking ravana god <laughs> Yes, when you HR, remember, when you human resources, calling us human was, capital. Yeah, and we and I changed it to human cattle. Cattle, yeah, uh, motherfuckers, human fucking capital. That's such an in, that's such a embarrassing cold. term. Yeah, I I was sh I was so fucking. I, you want to talk about being offended by a term? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay, let's take a breath. Okay, a job that we used to work at, <clears throat> the human resources department. HR, they changed their name to Human Capital. Back to you, checkmark. So they, we were, we were bodily money. We were assets. bodily money. We were assets. Well, uh, yeah, we always were. Right, but fuck, they made it. It was blatantly obvious what we were after being. I mean, it's funny to be. They had the gall to just call us that. <laughs> Like, like, hi, yeah, you're our property. You're an asset to us. Next, yeah, why right, would any they, questions? Why didn't they just leave it? Yeah, everybody it, knows HR. Right, calm like, the fuck down. They they have to go with some fucking redondo proactive redondo. word. <laughs> fucking, they got to play business bingo or something. <laughs> fucking douchebags. I hope we that never have to get place. rehired there. Rev Nada, thank you. What are they? They okay? They're not. That's. That's they not their name anymore. No, Thank they God. changed their fucking name. Who gives a shit? La 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 la. I can speak in hyperbole. 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 Bro, there's a this is a podcast. Bro. Like, well, who yeah. what? He got, uh, oh. <laughs> so we're kind of at the end of this. One kind of Una Mas. One more. Una See, mas. I love this. We need a one more. We do? I don't know. You want me just to record me saying Uno Mas? Uno Mas. Yeah, actually, that sounds... We're going to have to do some some real work here. We're starting to get back on, on Sunday? video. We're doing some stuff, man. Yeah. We're getting through some stuff. I'm well, excited. I'm excited oh, about this. You can just not contain yourself. Weeks. Look at me. My nipples are hard. Don't. You can't see them. The They're below the screen. password is hard nipple. Uh, the last I have is the Industry of Market Research, quote-unquote, focus groups, and how they are used for self-expression. What about that? That's all I got. All right. What do you got? Um, I would just like to say that coming out of this, the next one is how the left, we talk about the right. Yeah. With Thatcher President and Reagan. Reagan. And we talk about the left and Clinton and how they used it the that's same way. The next one, right? Right. And that's where I think the, sh I think the political shift, just speaking philosophically. Sure. Republicans used to be tied to business, right? I remember, yes. you know, taxes, low taxes for the rich and all this stuff. It seems like Clinton is where it, the script started to flip and the Democrats became beholden to those lobbyists and businesses that we talk about. This is why I'm I'm center right, I think. Part of, part of it why I'm center right is I'm my concern for whose pocket they're in, if that makes sense. Sure. Not that you also know that I think that all politicians are in somebody's pocket. So, yeah. but in this specific case, it was it's always they were at least at least honest left people back in the day were you know anti big business right it now they're in bed with them yeah that's what it seems like outside of that that's just a philosophical Dude, thought everybody's in bed with everybody yeah it's a goddamn it orgy right. we know <laughs> 
and have we you got seen this, eyes we got wiener, wide shut? We got wiener texting wieners. We got this <laughs> motherfucker with his foot under a bathroom stall. What the fuck's going on, Mur- Murka? Have you seen Murka. Eyes Wide Shut? I have not God, seen it yet. Don't watch I still, it. I know it's, it's terrible. Sh- it's funny. Don't do it. It's funny because, like, you know how I t- tell you to watch shitty movies? You tell you me not to watch face? shitty movies. You, did you ever watch Lawnmower Man with me? <sighs> no. <movie disc? laughs> it's a good movie. So uh, I, I guess we'll wrap it up. That's all I have, sir. Do you have anything else beep, 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 on that's Century all, of the Self, no. Volume 3? Part 3. Uh, part 4 is going to go into the other thing we just mentioned, and I think that's about it. Do we have anything else? Don't uh, you any? have housekeeping items? <sighs> or are you too exhausted no. emotionally and mentally to talk about those? I don't know. It's, I sound like a whiny bitch sometimes. Well, then don't sound like a whiny bitch. If you've already talked about it, let's not talk about it again. I've not talked about this. It happened today. Someone tweeted podcast recommendations, question mark. And you know what? The podcast community on Twitter is amazing. Like, everyone seems to be very uplifting. Regardless of the content they have, we all give it a try. We all be encur- we're all encouraging of just being creative, right? Because that's what it's about is expressing yourself. Hey, look at that. Self-expression? Full circle, Get bro. Get the fuck out of here. You like that? Ding. Boop. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, literally, podcast recommendations, question mark? To which I replied, our, I have like kind of a copy paste thing that's like, hey, please give us a try. We have this, that, and the other, you know, let me know what you're interested in. And the response was, sir, please get the hell out of my mentions. And I went, I, I was like, huh? Like, you, you just like asked the most generic thing. And it makes you laugh, right? Because you're like, is this guy like trying to start? Some, like, I, I don't understand what the goal is. Did you respond? I did. I wrote, sir, I believe that I believe that you made a request to which I responded. I also think that Twitter has a block feature, but I'm not that familiar with the system. Okay. And that's it. I mean, I wasn't going to get, and then I, I muted the person. But I don't do blocks because, like, I'm the, I muted them. They're not going to show up again. Okay. But. It was just weird. Like that's freaking weird. The it, it feels like a tacky. It does. Like I, I, I had not heard this. It's antagonistic. It's totally antagonisticy. Right. So and blocky. Oh, like, sorry, a tacky. It almost it feels like you know like being baited, like just putting that out there is like oh something's gonna bite, someone's gonna bite, and then troll. <laughs> troll is like a troll. Yeah, sir, please get the hell out of my mentions. That's oh, weird. What? Yeah, exactly. Exactly, and what I think is happened really well for you and I is um, well, you and I specifically is that social dilemma thing. We are being, we are being very careful about what we're posting and we are not engaging in any kind of toxicity. We refuse to do that. We are all about uplifting other people and being creative and saying thank you and being grateful and gracious. Um, That's the kind of people we are. Right. But I, I, I want it to be clear that that's what we want. We're not on Twitter to, to we're going to have controversial things, but we're not well, on, yeah. we're not on there to stir the pot for the pot's sake or for the stir sake. Right. <laughs> you know what I just found out here to close it up? If I may. Uh, sure. Um, w- my work just doubled. What? Twitter has a certain type of clientele. And after this election, there's a new company out there called Parler. Have you heard of Parler? I P-A-R-L-E-R? have. P-A-R-L-E-R? I have. It seems that a certain other type of clientele has jumped ship yeah. and gone there. So well, now- Do they jump from Facebook or do they jump from Twitter? Well, fa- Facebook, everyone posts regardless. Like, cause they, they have the friends and all. They're pretty connected on Facebook. Facebook's actually a very scary way. Did you hear about what happened with the- Remember the kidnapping? Which, no, no. Okay. Oh, boy, this is really, let, may I close this loop and oh, then we can fuck. talk about something else? You know what? We're going to do, we're going to do a section 230. Uh, we'll talk about that. But Parler now has opened and a group of people have kind of jumped ship to Parler. So now I have to post in two fucking places. And I've noticed, like, I've been only using Twitter and Facebook and I've noticed a significant dip in listenership. The last week and i thought it was it started upticking and then it crashed again 
But I thought after the it got settled, the thing with uh -huh. the early November got settled, uh -huh. it, it picked back up. It today was today was a good day, but the last three four days have been pretty like interestingly low. And it's not that we're awesome. I mean, we're grateful for everyone who listens. Yeah, to us. of course. But you know, we started gaining some momentum, right? And you start seeing the numbers, so it's interesting. So now I have to have to do double the work. That's it's, dumb. Yeah. So copy and paste, everybody. That's a good feature. Well, now, well, now I have to go on Twitter and Parlor, right? I mean, it's just basically how it's going to be. I'm totally cool with that. I just don't. You know, this is we do a full time job, sir. What? We work really hard. I'd love to make this our full time job. I love you. Our two champion and our executive senior super producer is is on it. Awesome. She's doing our website. What? She's taking a class in website design. No way. Oh my god. We and I, she, I, she has she has and, them. She, uh, they're hers. Also Tambian, she, her merch is her she's doing merch site research. Oh my god, I love her. I, I love know. you. Love you too. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, everyone Thanks out there who's me. who's given us a listen, just giving us a try. We're not everyone's cup of tea. We know that. But we are so grateful. And I just want to thank everyone for listening to us. I mean, we like I said, we we want Let's see to have some kind of meaningful talks and bullshit too. Like we're kind of, like I said, we're two sides of the coin, right? The dichotomy of us. Whoa. Would you like to close it out, sir? Be excellent to each other and party on dudes.